Hey viewers, I didn't know what to put out today, so I figured I'd look at something I've never cared about before. ENB presets for Fallout 4. I've tried ENBs in all of Bethesda's earlier games, but up until recently I didn't have hardware that was up to snuff for Fallout 4's ENB. After trying out multiple presets though, I realized that this video wasn't going to go the way I planned. First off, which ENB you think looks best is a completely subjective determination, and that's not really my forte. Anything objective I can say about ENBs tends to apply to all of them equally, and the more I messed around with them, the more I soured on the idea of using ENBs at all. But I'm running up against my deadline, and there's no time to research anything else, so I might as well discuss the merits of using ENB presets in Fallout 4. I have a similar feeling about ENBs as I do weather mods. Because the vanilla game already does a good enough job, they aren't necessary. In earlier Bethesda games, ENBs added dynamic shadows, tone mapping, volumetric fog, bloom, god rays, and ambient occlusion. Vanilla Fallout 4 already has all these features, so ENB has very little to do. When toggling ENB on and off, it's remarkable how little actually changes for such a massive reduction in performance. You're often losing one third or more of your frame rate for some crappy screen space effects. At least weather mods can add variety to the game or represent a different climate, and they generally don't cost nearly as many frames. Here's everything ENB does. Tell me if you're impressed. One of its first implemented features for Fallout 4 was disabling fake lighting. That sounds good, but all it actually does is disable the rim lighting surrounding characters. You can do the exact same thing with one console command at no performance loss. Another feature is SSAO, which the vanilla game already has at a much lower cost. There are many any tweak mods you can find around the Nexus that make vanilla SSAO look just as good as ENB SSAO. So it's a pretty useless feature for the most part, although I noticed that Reactor ENB in particular somehow makes use of SSAO to almost simulate global illumination. You can notice the wall in this bathroom somehow gets a green tinge from the tiles on this floor, thanks to SSAO. I don't know how Reactor ENB accomplishes this, but it can look good in some situations. It's too bad Reactor is one of the heaviest ENBs around and will absolutely murder your frame rate. Bokeh depth of field, bloom, and lens flares are added, but these aren't particularly realistic effects, and again, they're just different versions of what Fallout 4 already provides. Fallout 4 has bloom, it has depth of field during conversations, and it has lens flares for the sun and many lights. Thus, these features aren't great selling points for ENB. A new water shader is added, but it's up in the air whether it actually looks better than vanilla water. What definitely looks worse is the enhanced screen space reflections. Allowing more objects to show up in reflections and making more surfaces reflective is a huge mistake. It means there's objects constantly popping in and out of reflections in a distracting manner. I think Bethesda got it right by making SSR really faint. They knew how shitty SSR looks, so they tried to minimize use of it. By making these reflections more obvious, ENB makes the drawbacks of this method more clear as well. Ah, oh, if only we could have the superior planar reflections Fallout 3 and New Vegas have, but I guess that's too much to ask for, just like MSAA. Subsurface scattering is another ENB feature that's kind of already in the vanilla game, although it's hardly noticeable. Neither is the ENB version, to be honest. I can't even tell if this feature works, so it's not worth losing a single frame over, in my opinion. Complex Parallax is a new feature from the latest version of ENB, but it's not entirely what it's cracked up to be. The parallax effect can sometimes look good, but it breaks at oblique angles, and any decals on top of parallax textures will appear to be floating. It also eats up 5-10% to of your performance. The only features ENB has that I kind of like are Cloud Shadows and Detailed Shadows. Cloud Shadows are pretty self-explanatory. Depending on the weather, there will be massive shadows covering large parts of the landscape. They seem to be at least somewhat based on the actual clouds in the sky, which is awesome. They also have very little performance impact from what I measured. Detailed shadows are really just screen space shadows, which add some nice shadowing to small objects like grass that don't cast shadows in vanilla. Because of their screen space nature, when the object casting a shadow moves off screen, the shadow disappears too. But with smaller objects like grass, this is hard to notice. Most ENB presets use detailed shadows to try to simulate contact hardening shadows and reduce the Peter Panning effect, where shadows don't properly originate from the object casting them due to issues with traditional shadow maps. But these two good effects are not worth losing 10 to 15% of your frame rate over, in my humble opinion. That is, unless you have a ton of unused overhead above your monitor's refresh rate, which is a possibility if you're using a 60Hz monitor and you have a very powerful GPU. 
But you could also spend that overhead on increasing shadow draw distance or shadow map resolution. It could also be spent on rebuilding higher detail LODs, or maybe on adding vegetation to make the Commonwealth more lush. There's a lot of things I would improve before bothering with EMB. So yeah, that's my video. I know it's kind of crap and probably not what you wanted, but that's the way it goes sometimes. I'm going to crawl back into the swamp known as Nexus Mods so I can deliver something less disappointing next week. Toodles!